to my old red. Mm -hmm. Oh, first time it worked the right way. What? Facebook Live? Not Facebook. What? Oh, that's Facebook? That's What's Facebook. Oh, uh, your bad. He sent blessings, family. Welcome to Spiritually Seeing News. I'm Wunam, aka Nikki Love. Brother Dinkra. <coughs> All right, y'all. All right, y'all. I know y'all been waiting for us to come up on here. I know y'all been waiting for us. Peace. Uh, look, family, y'all don't understand. I got a lot to talk about. I have a lot to talk about. Y'all see the post, right? America the who? America the who? My brother Shabazz, will you come, come on, brother Shabazz. I know you got some controversial for me to go off on about. So you need to come on and bring some good topics to me, brother Shabazz. Okay? Candy Rain, peace and blessing. <laughs> all right, y'all. So, all right, first, again, let's say welcome to Spiritually Seeing News, okay? Now, brother Adinko, you didn't even introduce yourself. Yes, I did. No, you didn't. They didn't hear you. You didn't hear me. <laughs> they didn't hear you. You didn't hear me. I see. Hey, Jessica. All right, y'all. Okay, so tonight, first to start with, what you want to start with, Brother Dinker? Because I'm mad as hell, y'all. I'm mad. And when I say America, the who, who the hell are they talking about America? We deal with so much bullshit, okay? So first, we're going to talk about a few things. Y'all, excuse me if I sound kind of raspy because Georgia kicking my ass with the allergies, okay? <clears throat> all right, so, all right, Brother Dinkwa. First, y'all, well, let me see. Hey, Nikki, I miss your show back in the sun. That it days. You mean the Nikki Love days? It was no, hold on, hold on. Let's get this straight, brother. Let's get this straight. Nikki Love is the one who brought Sarnetta on the Nikki Love show. So you mean in the Nikki Love days, okay? Let's get it right. Let's not get it confused. That don't negate the fact I love my brothers. They get on my goddamn nerves, but I love them. <laughs> okay. So, in the Sarnetta days. Yeah, okay. In the Nikki Love days. And then Sarnetta started his show after, because I told him they need to get their own show. So, he started his show. Then the brother called back and said, Nikki Love, Nikki Love, I'll give you props. I don't know how you stay so consistent with this radio show. Yeah. You ain't know that, right? Okay. <laughs> all right, EJB, Brittany V, Candy Ray. All right, y'all, we want to talk about some things that's spiritually seeing news. But more than talk about it, we want to see about it. You know how we go into it spiritually, and then, you know, we start tapping into our first eyes. You know what I mean? So tonight, we're going to start tapping into some of the things, okay? Some of the things that's going on. Now, Brother Dinko, since you're the man, I'm going to let you bring up the first topic. Topic. <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't know. I just seen seen this thing with um with, uh, little with, with George Lopez. I wasn't gonna talk about it, but I just thought it was funny. Um, wordplay sent me this thing. The comedian George Lopez. He pretended like he was peeing on Donald Trump's star in, uh, in Hollywood, and now they making a big deal about it. <laughs> <laughs> no, he just didn't bring that up. Though. Did I he just it, say George Lopez? I thought it was funny. I, are we what were we supposed to read about that? No, I just thought it was funny. I just want to talk. Just want to bring that up. The right things now. that make <laughs> me, <laughs> the things that make <laughs> me funny. I don't think there's one goddamn funny thing about it. But you know why he said George? Because he like Mexican. He Mexican. <laughs> yeah, I know he undercover Mexican. You think from me Texas, he 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 became a Me Mexican. You know what I mean? Not so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's how he's Mexican food, y'all. I like Mexican food, but that don't mean I'm. That's he a goddamn. I think I'm he's a goddamn Mexican, okay. But anyway, you, can you, you bring up a real topic, brother Dinkwa? You like them fajitas when we was in Texas? That I ain't say the damn fajitas <laughs> good. I ain't gonna lie, they sure was. I ain't gonna lie, but I'm not a Mexican type of food person. You was that day. Well, just only All because right. I was being cordial and nice let's, because let's, I, was let's, your, I was in your hometown. Let's get to the, um, I guess, what do you want to talk about? The big thing or the little thing? You want to talk about? Well, what Okay. What y'all wanted to talk about? There have been all kind of stuff in the news. What about the football player that's being accused of setting up his ex-girlfriend? First of all, now, you want to touch on that? I'm going to let you touch on that first before I go spiritually see into anything. 
Um, what's the uh, Lashawn McCoy? Uh, I, I don't know what team he plays for now. The Buccaneers or something. I don't know. I think it's the Buff Buffalo Bills. Okay. I think. I don't know. I don't. I don't remember who he plays for, but uh, he got accused of setting up his uh, girlfriend because she was sta- she. This is what it was. She was living in his house, and all of a sudden, some dudes broke in and beat her up. Now she said, "Well, she said it was one guy," and what happened was. You know, he pissed the whooped her and was asking her for money and all of this. And so she's saying that now now that they broke up, he was allowing her to stay in her, his house. But now that they broke up, she's accusing him of having something to do with her being beat and all of this stuff. So I, I wanted to know what were y'all thoughts on that. And I, I, will, and I also want to get Wunam's opinion on that. I want to know what she sees spiritually. What I've seen is... Well, I'll just say what it, I don't think he I don't I don't see that he had anything to do with it. But I do know that you know, <clears throat> on it just doesn't it doesn't even make sense for him to do something like that because number one, she's at his house, so he's going to be the first suspect off top if, if especially if she was to die. So that just didn't make sense to me. So I just wanted to know what was up with that. Okay, he played for the Bills. That's what I thought. Buffalo. Did he say? Munam's opinion. Mm-mm. I said my opinion. I said. And I you said, but I don't know what Munam's opinion is. No. We don't. We no, don't, no, no, no. I did not say don't, don't be put, don't be put words in my mouth. Nah. See me trying to pick fights and shit. Did he say? I it, said. Though? I said. I, I don't mean, know what Munam sees, but in my opinion, you didn't say see. You said opinion is. Didn't y'all hear him say she that? She be hearing shit. Y'all I ain't hear shit. Tell no. him. Tell him truth, Look, y'all. Did y'all hear him say? I don't know what Munam's opinion is. Anyway, we don't have opinions. We see shit, okay? We see shit. We see real shit. So, now, what Spirit showed me with that situation right there, okay, is that she's mad at him. If you all pay attention, like I tell you all, to the headlines, the headlines say ex-girlfriend, okay? Now, what Spirit showed me is that they, this dude didn't set her up. It, it, you know, spiritually seeing, I don't see that he set her up at all. <laughs> what? What's so funny? What's so that, funny? That, What's so that, funny? I mean, why would he set up? He, he would be an idiot, you know. But it all, I ain't saying that ain't no idiots that, that are in the NFL, but it well, would make sense to me. I'm just going to say, I don't see that he set her up. And I do see that there's a little bit of... Uh, you know, anger there on her behalf. Now, if you listen to what happened, they've had it according to the news, okay? The news, they've had the police at the house. They had different, you know, problems. But I'm going to tell you like this. What Spirit showed me about this girl, that he was with, she got issues. And what Spirit showed me, he really, she don't really, she didn't really love him anyway. She was just with him for his money, okay? Aren't they all? Uh... Well, no, that's not true. Not all of them would demand for the money. Sometimes, but, I, but there's a lot of them that don't. Nah, don't love put the it. No, no, I would yeah. say I would say fifty fifty. Okay, fifty fifty. That's a that's a high percentage. But, like no, you but, know but you know, like, when you say all, oh, you're saying basically ninety eight percent and two percent of the women that don't get with these men for money. Well, I'm just basing that for you know, the don't give one, the, one of the best spiritual seers that I know. Okay, well, the point said is... Said about the entertainers that a lot of these women don't love love these guys. No, one of the things I would tell <laughs> any entertainers that I would read for, any personal entertainers that I read for, be careful. Because some of these entertainers, some of them, you know their names, some of them, I, you know, y'all, I can't say their names. But let me tell y'all something. A lot of these entertainers get in the, in the entertainment field and think they're who they think they are. They become a whole new person. And Fact. at this time, you got women... That are chasing after them. And like I told a few of them that I was dealing with. Especially some of my sports. You know. Basketball and football players. And my actors and comedians. Okay. And and rappers. And rappers that I've dealt with on a spiritual level. Let me explain something to y'all. Be careful. Because these women get with you because of your name and your fame. They know the routine. He got money. Have a baby by him. Be his baby mama. You see. Lock them legs around them. <laughs> you know what I mean? But they're not yeah. loving these guys like they're supposed to be loved. And that's where I come. A lot of them come to me, and I'm the one to be like, they'll be like, well, 
Uh, Nikki, could you read this? Could you read this, sister? Oh, yeah, well, she ain't good. She just wants you for your money. But they, they don't be believing that. And and the thing about it is that at the end of the day, you got to enable that time. You got to make sure it's not on the timer. At the end of the day, you know, some of them believe, some of them don't. Some of them come back to me and said, Nikki, you know, you was right. I said, yeah, well, what the hell you come to me for reading for if you wasn't going to listen? If I tell you what I see... And you know most of my stuff is at least 95% accurate. Why you were not listening about a woman? Because you allowed these women to mesmerize you with their asses, okay? And I'm be <laughs> being real. And then you get caught out there. Be careful, okay? Yeah, now. Card for. Oh, where's the other card? Look in the bag. <clears throat> so pretty much, family, what we got to realize is that what happens is you know, a lot of these, you know, you know, celebrity, you know, entertainers and sports and stuff are, are getting set up and it's not right. It's not right. I don't see it. Again, I'm going to tell you what I see spiritually. I don't see that he set this woman up. I don't see it. And I see, I picked up a kind of this type of energy with, the, with this woman that I wasn't feeling. Just by listening to her voice on the phone, I felt, I felt ratchetness from this woman, okay? So, if you are, you're shaking the camera around over here, but if you are, <laughs> are wondering, okay, if, uh, you know, he is going to get charged for domestic violence, whatever they're saying he's charged for, I don't see it, okay? So, I'm going to give y'all that much. Now, let's go to the lines. Rihanna says, let me see, Rihanna says, six years ago, Charlie's Theron, a white actress, adopted a little black boy. Now, the little boy is dressing like a little girl. This white woman who adopted him is even giving his girly hairstyles and letting him wear earrings. Shaking my head. What do you see about this and why is she doing this? This really angers me. I honestly would have to see her and see the pictures, um, Rihanna. But honestly speaking, I, I got a problem with that. They're doing too goddamn much. They're doing too much shit. This is ridiculous now. Come on now. You dressing a little boy like a little girl? I think, and what I get from that spiritually, as I said spiritually seeing, what I'm getting getting from that, it's like, ha uh ha, -huh, we got one of yours. Since you don't want to take care of yours, we're going to show you what we're going to do to him. We're going to turn him into a little girl. You know what I mean? I got a problem with that, and I really do. So, I, I'm just going to say this. Um, as I always say, Rihanna, their doing will be their very own undoing. Their doing will be their very own undoing. Trust me when I tell you. Because that's a god... Now you got me mad, Rihanna, because that's a goddamn shame. What's They're her name? Take one. But you know what? I'm going to tell y'all like this, and that's our black asses' karma. You know why it's our black asses' karma? Because at the end of the day, years ago, when I was fostering children, okay? And I adopted too, okay? Let me tell you this. And let me, and let me make this clear. When I was sitting there doing the classes, there was no black people in there, but one black couple. Everybody else is white. More black folks need to adopt black children. And I'm going to tell you for a fact, I know this, and I was doing the research on it to see, okay? More black folks need to adopt more black children. Now, all right. So, now we're going to move on um, to the next topic. I don't know if y'all heard about it, but do you know they're reopening the Emmett Till case? They're reopening the Emmett Till case after 60 years. Now, the two men that, you know, admitted to it, they died. According to what they're saying is they have new evidence. Why wouldn't you let the ancestor rest? Now you want to open the case. Ain't a goddamn thing you could do about it, but... According to what they're saying is that the lady is still alive and she is admitting to lying. So. This bitch a racist. Huh? She a racist. She. Okay. And who? This the bitch right here. Oh. Right? Well, who? The one who whistled that? No, the one who's saying, talking about the damn uh, her. About uh, the little boy. Her. What is she talking about? Right there. Yeah. 
Nah, I'm just saying. All right. Why would you do some shit like that to a little black girl? I don't okay, know. you know. No, I'm sorry to get off topic. That kind of made me mad, man. Well, yeah, that that kind of pissed me off too. I, I, you know, come on now, you taking our children and just effeminizing them and and putting earrings on them and you know and 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 to me it's like you sending a message to black folks. That's how I feel about it, and I got a problem with it. Okay. All right. Somebody said, uh, um, Maya Z Zaire Brooks says. What about Angela Jolie? She adopt she's adopting black kids. Does she really love them? Wasn't we just watching something on Angela Jolie the other night? Yeah. Angel jo Angela jo Jolie or whatever the hell her name is. What I picked up with her. She's a freak. Um, I don't know if it's just about her being a freak, but I just seen a free spirit with her. And honestly speaking, if you notice, she's got... A race of each child because she mm -hmm. got a Chinese child so I see that Angela Jolie is really honestly a lover of children mm -hmm. I see that with her spirit and let me tell you something somewhere in that little girl that, that chick's line My, yeah. in, in her lineage mm -hmm. is some black y'all don't want to hear it but it is what the hell it is and let me tell you something she really does love children I don't see that with Angela Jolie I see that she is sort of she comes of course as if in her lineage, Mommy Walter walks with her. Mommy Walter walks with Angel, Angel, Angela Jolie. That so, makes sense with the, why she got all the kids. And this is what I picked up with her watching this show the other night about her. Is that this is why she loves children. So Angel, And if you notice, she just don't have black children. She got different, different races of children. Mm -hmm. <coughs> Excuse me, different cultures. So with saying that, Angela Jolie sincerely loves children. Okay? Now, Choi Sierra says, hello, hello, Choi Sierra. Choi C. Sierra, sorry. You want, you want to tell them what else you saw about her? What? What else did I see about her? You said you saw that she could see. Oh, yeah, Angela jo And another thing with Angel uh, Angela Jolie, she's a seer. She could see. You understand? She, she could see. Because uh, she has a spiritual side to her, a little bit more spiritual than what people know. Okay? But she's a seer. All right, so let's move on. We just had somebody named Choicey, Choicey uh, join. We got uh, Cochise, Desalines. We got Long, Long Live, Live the, the Kings. Kings. Where you been at, Long Live the Kings? You ain't never come back, come visit us. What, what you been up to? What you doing? Did you shut up your shrines? You know, you need to call me because we got, I got a word with you. You spirits are looking for you, okay? Spirits are looking for you. All right, now. Now, when the spirits say... They're ready to work with you and you run from your obligation. That's on you. That's on you. If you it's one thing to not know you're supposed to be doing spiritual work, but once you know, you're obligated to do the spiritual work. That's right. Get on your journeys and get on your paths, okay? Now, also, too, I wanted to talk about now TMZ. T. Tell them what I did to TMZ today because I'm not playing with their asses. She called TMZ, left a message, and said they better leave Bill Cosby alone. <laughs> she ain't fucking playing. <laughs> leave TMZ. Leave my goddamn elder alone. I don't give a damn what y'all say. Y'all go back and find the video. We read it inside and out. We read it inside and out. And spirit don't lie. And we had four confirmations on it. Spirit don't lie. He didn't rape none of them women. And let me tell y'all something. At the end of the day, y'all go look at that show because we did a whole show. And we pulled out the divination map. We pulled out the cards. We pulled out all of that. He didn't rape them women. But now you want to get on goddamn TMZ and say, what did they say? They said he... I the disgraced that, elder? Yeah, the disgraced... Uh comedy something i forgot how to the, what, how the, the disgrace the, the disgraced comedian elder bill cosby gets the police called to his house his 81st birthday because of some loud jazz music that's the white folks just fucking with him <laughs> just never i mind. don't give a goddamn them white folks better <laughs> sit down shit, and leave that elder this. alone i mean wait for this niggas down for i can't wait for him to go to jail <laughs> I'm going to tell y'all like this. And for the white folks that want to keep doing the shit they're doing. And that's why this show is entitled America the Who. Because if there's one thing I know during Vietnam time, 
white folks and black folks was coming together like buck cheeks, okay? Like our brother Eddie Griffin said. Coming, coming together, together like buck cheeks, cheeks okay? okay? And <laughs> in the Vietnam War, there was your best friend. There was Billy Bob and there was Johnny Jackson, okay? Mm -hmm. And in that war, they were American. Mm -hmm. So with saying that, those that are dealing with this racist bullshit that we see now. And we'll talk about Papa John's pizza. I couldn't stand that goddamn pizza anyway. I hated that pizza anyway. It's nasty. Yeah, she lying because I'd be like, let's get some Papa John's. She'd be like, I don't like that nasty shit. I'm telling you, I ain't like no <laughs> Papa John's pizza. Spirit knew I didn't want it in the first place. They probably spit in the black folks' pizza. Oh, we we didn't. I'm sorry. I got y'all topic. Huh? Did you? No, no, we no. We go into the uh, no. whole Emmett Till thing. You, you started, I did. No, I did. I but she about, admitted this. this yeah, I, told, you I talked said about that. that on the deathbed. <clears throat> so anyway. Oh, my bad. Hey, Nita Pepper. So anyway, I'm just going to say this, y'all. At the end of the day, you know, white folks better stop with the bullshit. And hey, they're coming bro. at us left, right, upside down, inside out. But now when you start messing with our elders, okay, that's the problem. That's the problem. Bill Cosby, elder, 81 years old, put a lot of time and energy into the community, the black community. A lot of people didn't like what he had to say, but oh, well, that's your goddamn business because a lot of what he had to say was coming from an old school thought, was coming from wisdom, was com coming from dealing with the energy of, you know, whatever he'd been through in his time as a black man. And we didn't understand when he was saying, do not be ghetto, do not be... We didn't understand that because we couldn't understand the mind of an elder who had been through some real shit. But honestly speaking, nothing has changed. Nothing has changed because we're still dealing, race, dealing with racism on the highest level. But I got a message for the white folks. If you don't stop with the nonsense and the bullshit, calling, calling the goddamn police on little girls selling water, call the police on people barbecuing, Cause some of this stuff is fake, y'all. But some of it is real. And we're saying that if you don't, you will see that ancestors have risen and ancestors are not playing. They're not playing. And they are tearing new asses and karma is coming back to y'all like y'all never seen before. And if you do not and if you do not recognize the energy for what it is right now, you better start recognizing it because the ancestors are not playing. So you white folks that are going around here thinking you're superior, being racist, making racist comments. And the thing about the, the, the uh, what's his name? From the uh, pizza place. Papa John. Candidacy. Ain't worth remembering the goddamn name. Papa He's, John. He grew, he grew up in Illinois. Kansas. No, no, no. He, he said, said Kansas. He, he said, said when in Illinois they used to drag. Uh, no, he did. He said Kansas. Okay. Go look it up. <laughs> let me, don't let me get it down. Go ahead. <laughs> no, nah, go ahead. Go, go. You going to look it up? Go, Papa John, he said, or whoever the CEO is. Well, it don't matter. I mean, on where the phone, from? Well, you know, back where I'm from in Kansas, you know, they used to, they used to, or Wisconsin or somewhere, what the hell. I know it was in Illinois, though. Uh, he said, they used to drag black folk till they die. Who the hell in 2018 said some shit like that? He said it in a company meeting. I don't private. give a goddamn private. My ass ain't nothing private. They listening that. to your phones. They listening. They watching you in every direction. Who the hell says some shit like that in 2018? Oh, where I come from. Oh, back there. They used to drag black folk until they die. You think that's fucking funny? It's not fucking funny. And let me tell you, I get mad. And this is when y'all hear this language take place fucking funny because it's not a joke you think it's funny to sit up there and watch another human being being dragged by like a goddamn piece of meat really let me tell y'all something he said it was taken out of context and hear me now he said it was taken out of context he's a full of shit he's a goddamn liar let me tell y'all something and he said the, and he said nigga and he said nigga too but the point is I, I have to say something about this ancestors are not playing and as I told y'all about the predictions we did the other night with weather, ancestors are coming. And like Marcus Garvey said, I will see you in the whirlwind. But what he didn't tell you is he was bringing a million ancestors with him. So those that want to keep up this bullshit racist shit in America, 
okay? And keeping keeping this drama up with, you know, oh, I'm more superior than you, and I'm better than you. You better be careful, because the ones like that, and mark my word, y'all, y'all gonna see them start disappearing. Freak shit start happening. Spirit snatching them. Spirit snatching their souls. You see what I'm saying? You gonna see. Heart attacks, strokes. They ain't gonna know why. Car wrecks. All kind of shit is gonna start happening Especially to them. Especially now in this industry. <laughs> and if you do not understand that not only the wrath of mother nature is coming, the wrath of the ancestors, the you wrath of Indiana. the cosmic um, energy. Okay, Indiana. So we were both from. I know it was one of the places. I, I know was it was right. in you Illinois. Was wrong. You said Illinois. <laughs> I said, so Indiana. anyway, <laughs> all I'm saying but that's is that at the, the end of the day, they better be very careful. And they better hear me. They better hear me clearly. Because tonight I'm watching the news. You got a police officer that was just arrested for stealing $37,000. Mm -hmm. You see? It's not a joke no more, family. And they better pay attention. Remember we was watching the news the other week and uh, they fired everybody at the police station. Because they found, <laughs> I think it was the whole drug, the drug task force mm -hmm. um, at, at some police station. I don't know if it was in Georgia or where it was, but they had a, they had a big drug bust. Like, I don't know, a couple hundred pounds of marijuana and it, and it all came up missing. <laughs> oh, <laughs> they say it got eaten by, uh, it must have got eaten by um, bugs or something. But see, we're at a time right now, if you look at the cosmic energy, and all of this retrograde taking place in Mars right now. Y'all ain't seen nothing yet. And see all of the evil and all of the unrighteousness and all the racism and all the unjust is getting ready to turn around quicker than you could blink your eye. And the ancestors are not playing no more. They snatching souls, y'all. And when I say snatching souls, they snatching souls. They giving ass whoopings. Okay? And you know what? You just sit back and you just watch. Because if you think you can continue, such as our bill, as I was saying, they disrespected Bill Cosby. Who the hell you think you are? TMZ going to start losing business now. They're going to start losing viewers now. TMZ is going to start losing millions of viewers now. How dare you disrespect our elder? You know the owner's a Jew. He's going to probably do it. I don't give a yeah. goddamn if he's a Jew, who, he whatever gonna, the he hell gonna, he is. He's going to do a sacrifice. No, his sacrifices ain't working no more either. <laughs> and you know what? Cause and, and, and let me tell you something. He could do what the hell he want to do, but you got the Africans behind Bill Cosby too. So let him do a sacrifice. You're going to have to deal with some serious Bush Africans. That's what we're going to deal with. While we're on the subject of Bill Cosby, I, I know later, um, last year it was a bunch of reports about uh, him lying on his deathbed ready to die and stuff, getting ready to die. What you think about that? I think they're just, you know, media makes up any goddamn thing. Media constantly making up shit. You can't believe shit they put on media nowadays. That's why we're doing spiritually seeing news so we can see for you. We spiritually see. So we can see through the bullshit. See through the bullshit, okay? <laughs> All right, family, we're going to take some questions. Go ahead and put your questions in here. Or if you want to call in, you can call in at 909-749-8626, okay? If you have some questions. Pertaining to what topics we're talking about, okay? Let me or try and get no free readings. Or if you want to um, make a statement, call us up. Call us up. 909-749-8626. Excuse me. Peace and blessings to Kofi, Isaiah Coleman, Dez. Peace and blessings, family. I know all is well. All right, so anyway, something else I wanted to talk about, family... All right, we talked about Bill Cosby, we talked about Papa John's, we talked about the football player. There was something else we wanted to discuss. What else is going on, y'all? Because I've seen a lot of stuff going on. Dang, I, it's just some something that just came across the phone, too. Uh, what? Something about a football player having we a fight. We talked about the Emmett, Emmett Till. Uh -huh. Having a fight in um, the airport. I don't know. I didn't get a chance to look at it. It came, up, it came across when I, we was getting on. You know, this is some of our karma, too, family. 
You know why some of our karma that we have to deal with this bullshit? Because we haven't come together united either. We're so busy being divided and being them crabs in the barrels that some of this is our damn karma too. You know that, right, y'all? Y'all know that some of this is our karma. Hmm. I'm going to just say, black people better get it together and start coming together and uniting with each other because at the end of the day, if not, you're going to continue to see the level energy that we're seeing right now. Y'all better wake up. Y'all better wake up. Okay? And come together uh, spiritually, too, and stop trying to do rituals on each other for stupid shit. Oh, you want to talk about that? <laughs> you know. Talk about that? By the way, family... Speaking, let's go back to the elder topic because it did lose my train of thought. Today we were at the store and a white woman walks into the store. Elder white woman. She said she was going to be 71. 70, right? 72. 71, 72. Sound right. And she asked us about a bartering system. Now, one thing I do know about us black folks, we don't, we're not as cold hearted as some of those white folks. And you can say what you want to say. If you white listening, you're damn right. It is what the hell it is. It's the truth. I'm not going to say all white folks, but there's a few select that I know that some goddamn mean asses, okay? Like the one Papa John talking about, oh, we used to drag black people till they died. Like, I'm talking to the ones like that. <laughs> like that. Okay? Now, we're saying that. Elder white woman come in the store. She asked us about a bartering system. But she didn't say it like that. Y'all know as Africans, we bought it. You know what I mean? Very nice woman. Wanted to look around, you know. Trying to be nosy. But, you know, she's an elder. So, you know, we're taught to respect our elders. <coughs> we're taught to respect our elders. And we're saying that. I, you know, I was, you know, I told her, I said, well... I said, sure, we could discuss that. You know, you want some readings, we spit some books, whatever, whatever, we'll see. So we're saying that. I don't know if it was a test. What you see, Brother Dinkler? Fucking bacteria got all in my throat. Here. I, it, see, I see. She wanted to be nosy. Um, she she really wanted to see like what what kind of work we did, like how we were doing our work. That's what you see. Mm -hmm. <coughs> but I see that she did want. She really does want to barter though. But she just kind of knows she's a witch. She's an old witch. So you think you know what is it with y'all white Wiccans that come in and want to test black witches? Or women, or women that deal with this type of work. What is it that, why do y'all feel like y'all got a test? Why y'all sit your asses down somewhere and do your work over there? Because we get this a lot. I get a lot of white women that want to come against and try to test me with the African traditions. You know that, right? You know what it is? They think, they think we just getting into this. And a lot of them been doing rituals for years. They've been working. Uh -huh. Against black people, because black people don't deal with, they believe in Jesus. They don't deal with their uh, African tradition. They don't deal with their true power. A lot of black women and men have a lot of power when it comes to spiritual work, but they're Christians. You know, we we we, we heard the brother, you know, the, the, your African brother talking about, you know, a lot of the, the women that have a lot of power <laughs> are in the church. But they don't know that they got power like that. They think it comes from Jesus. So when they praying and they speaking and they putting their ashe on something and they calling Jesus, <laughs> they, th they think Jesus is the working force behind it and it's not. It's actually, you know, the we, spirits that walk with them. I used to tell my Christian sisters that all the time. I have a lot of Christian sisters that come to me. And, you know, they be behind the church. They go to church on Sunday, be coming, oh, Nikki Love, I need you to do a ritual on this chick. Girl. She was talking about me. And da, 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 and this in the church and that in the church. Yeah, uh -huh, for real, y'all, right? But anyway, so it, it's something about 
these wicked women, a white woman that's in Wiccan that want to come to challenge, you know, us black women that deal with African tradition or voodoo or whatever, you know, hoodoo or whatever you want to call it. And they always want to test us. Like, why, why don't you sit down somewhere? Why do you feel the need to test us? Okay? Because I don't think you want to do that. And I think in the past, a lot why they used to why they say like what we deal with is evil because they was getting their ass whooped with it when the, those who did practice it. Yeah. Well. Oh well. And now now they're it. trying to get the they want to know the secrets and get the traditions and they get asking black people to initiate them exactly into this exactly. So you see a lot of black people initiating white people into the tradition now because white people want to know how can I have that power? Oh, it'll work for me. Yeah. Hey, you will you hug me first? I'm here first. Hi. What's up? Hi. Hi. <laughs> you want Nana? In case. Oh, Love Terrell you. said, what's up? He said, sup, Nana. Oh, no, no, no. oh okay. <laughs> All right. Get out of there. All right, family. That's the grandbabies. All right. Now, Kofunya, I think we spoke on that a while back, but we'll speak on it again in reference to the young man. Who um and they go for you. Really? Yeah. Okay. In reference to the young man in the Bronx that got that got um killed, the young man. That's what you're talking about, gang. I I I remember that. Now I wanna say this to you. Um Kufanya, it was sad. Yeah. And you know, at the end of the day when we were actually looking at the situation and you know, reading and hearing about it on the news, I heard that the two, gang members admitted that he was two, the wrong person. Two. Mm -hmm. Okay? Two. But, you mm -hmm. know, this is the one of the things I want to speak two. on where we have to understand. Okay? Ice. Well, we have to understand that... <laughs> oh, come get these little messages here. <laughs> get back. Yeah, we'll get him some ice. Y'all go over there. <laughs> now, get him some ice. So this is what we have to understand that, okay, these, us in the community have to do better. If there's gangs in the community, whose fault is it? That's our community. Mm -hmm. If these young boys are out here acting a fool, where the parents at? I, you know what I can tell you? What I have noticed with the spirituality. What? Me and you, <coughs> we can reach them with our spirituality because they know, it, from one, they know it works and they know it's real. Uh -huh. And they can see evidence of it. Uh -huh. Them calling on Jesus, unless they got an ashe with them, it doesn't work for them. Uh -huh. So, and I, because I, I've noticed that with the youth that are coming, Mm -hmm. They're leaving that lifestyle alone so we can get... Because when we tell them y'all need to come into the spirituality and leave that alone, mm -hmm. a lot of them are slowly but surely... You know, it may take a little bit, but they leaving it and coming into the spirituality like they're supposed to. Look at the uh, this year that we got uh, this year. He left it alone and he's working now. Mm -hmm. We're proud of him. Mm -hmm. He did a five-year bid, but he turned his life around. He, You know, I talk to him a lot and give him encouragement and, and we make sure that he stays on his spiritual path. So... This is one way to get them to do that if you can talk to them. And a lot of them will talk to you because and us, because we don't sugarcoat anything. We, we don't, we don't, you know, we're not, you know, trying to act like we're holier than that. We, we talk like we talk now. We cuss and everything else. And she cuss all of them out if they not on doing what they're supposed to do. You know what I'm saying? So I think they have a lot more respect for us than they would a pastor. Well, I think, too, because you can't talk at these young boys. You got to talk with them. Mm -hmm. And the difference is they want to talk. The churches want to talk at them. Well, you a thug. You just to the street. You this, this, you that. You mm -hmm. don't know their story. Okay? Mm -hmm. Now, it's sad because they mistakenly killed this young boy for no reason at all. Mm -hmm. However, the question is why they in gangs and where's their parents at and what the parents don't know and why these you know young boys in gangs like this. That's my question. Well, why we haven't done that? Why the parents not stepping up to the plate? I think a lot. Well, I know why some of them join. Some of them join for protection. A lot of them join, but for a sense of family because they don't have that. 
and 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 like ju being jumped in, being clicked in, and all that. Sometimes that feels like a rite of passage for them because we don't even have our traditions anymore. Right. You know? Now, Kofunya says, "Why did no one help him, Nikki?" You know what I seen with that Kofunya? I'm gonna say like this: that boy. You know, first of all, I think you're in New York too. And you know, going up in Brooklyn, y'all, let me tell y'all something. At the end of the day, you mind your business. Only time I really see people in New York on the subway, somebody help somebody, if, you know, if they was getting robbed and it was one person. But you're talking about five dudes. People were scared to jump in. They didn't know what to expect. So I'm saying that people were scared for that, you know, to jump in. But let me take it on a spiritual level, Kufunya. That was his number, whether we like it or not. Mm -hmm. And you know, there's a such thing as divine records. And in the divine records, it's written your life story and how long you'll be here on this earth. Okay? Yeah. And we're saying that, whether we like it or not, it was written in his divine record that he was going to be here until that age of 15. Mm -hmm. As much as we don't want to hear it because we're so attached to the physical, that's what happens. Okay? Um,. You, you know, uh, when I um, when I was growing up and my, my older brother died, he died when I was nine years old. And for years, it bothered me all the way up to adulthood. And when I became spiritual and I realized that, you know, everybody had their number and that's what it was, it was easier for me to accept than, you know, when I was a Christian, I was like, Jesus, God, why you take my brother and why you let this happen? Mm -hmm. But it made more sense to me that it was in his divine record and we choose to come back and we choose our... That made more sense to me than, you know, Jesus letting him die. Or, right. You know. Right. <laughs> and see, that's what we got to realize. Kavunia, you know, at the end of the day, we don't want to hear that. We don't want to hear it because, you know, you're so attached to the physical aspect. You never look at the soul of somebody... You're always looking at the physical aspect of somebody, but the soul always been here, never been away, always been here. Your soul never dies. Energy cannot be cre created nor destroyed. You see what I'm saying? So we're saying that what we have to understand is that we are too attached to the physical, and that's why when you get people that, you know, transition off of this earth, people are constantly, oh, my God, you know, breaking and crying. No, you should be celebrating. To be celebrate, you should be celebrating. So we're saying that, um, as sad as it may sound, that was his number. That's his time. It was up. Was written in the divine records. Okay. Oh, shit. Yeah, says, "I understand." All right, my sister. So anyway, um, yeah, we we, I, you know, I, I'm trying to finish up my book because you know, in my book called "How to Strip This from Nature." I'll get, I'll touch on this, okay? And I'll be touching on this because I want people to get the understanding. We have gotten so attached to the physical, we don't understand. And the next, and it's funny because tonight, before we decided to do this topic, I wanted to do a show, and it was called "Who is Your First? Who is God?" And it's called "Your First Ancestor is Your God," okay? Um, but we'll do that another time. But you know. It is what it is. And I feel bad for the boy. You know, you feel bad. You don't want to see nobody lose their life. He was young. He was 15 years old. But when you go into it spiritually, it was his time. We don't know when our time is, when our day is. But if I'm able to look into the, you know, um, the divine records, you know, you get it pretty much of an idea. You know what I mean? Okay. Right? Been thinking about this. What you been thinking about, Mia? What you been thinking about? All right, family, we got 15 minutes. We're getting ready to get up off of here. 15 minutes left. Um, we'll take some callers. If you don't want to call, we just put the number in 909-749-8626. Okay? If y'all want to call in. Kofunia says E equals MC2. You sure about that, Kofunia? That was uh, Einstein's equation. <laughs> that was Einstein's. That wasn't an ancient Nubian. That wasn't Thoth's equation. That wasn't Jahuti's equation. Okay? <clears throat> Being too attached to the physical matters. <clears throat> yeah, me, it does matter. It does. But as sad as it may sound, it is like, you know, what, what do you do? You know what I mean? 
What do you do? You can't you can't go through life, you she know. She meant to say getting getting too oh. attached to the physical. Getting too attached to the physical. Oh, okay. Yeah, well, we you know, and this is why it's so important for us to know our African traditions and our African culture. Mm -hmm. This is why when you go to Africa, even though you have Africa has been colonized by Muslims and Christians, you understand? You have pretty much, you know, uh, every house still has an African sh uh, shrine to their ancestors. Many tribes still uh, pay homage and worship their ancestors. As a matter of fact, Unless they the only place Christians. that don't an worship their ancestors <laughs> is America. Because India does, China does, Japan does. They are very big on ancestor worship. We're the only country in the world who doesn't an do ancestor worship. Believe it or not, go look it up. White people celebrate their ancestors. They don't worship them, but they celebrate them. George Washington, Abraham Lincoln. Uh, We're talking about their <laughs> lineage ancestors. Their mothers, their fathers, you know what I mean? Because they've been taught to think, oh, well, what's your dead, your dead, and that's it. You don't worship the dead. Mm. Excuse me? But the dead is only the physical body. When your physical body dies, it returns back to the very thing called nature, which you are already a part of. Like I always say, when you walk outside, you walk into yourself. So we're saying that pretty much. Come on now. Yeah, you can worship. You worship your goddamn forefathers, but you don't worship your own mother and your father? Get out of here with that. You worship Jesus and God, but you ain't never seen Jesus and God, but you've seen your mother and your father, but you don't worship them? Come on now. It don't even make logical sense. Think about it. Think about it. It don't. Kafunya said divine order. That's right. Divine order. I think I think the European has done a great job of uh, brainwashing the you know the African, getting him to worship God in His image, and taking and placing the fear of death in him. Because before the European came, he had no fear of death. He didn't mind dying. So I think that has a lot to do with what's going on now because if a lot of like a lot of black men had fear of dying, they wouldn't do half the stuff they do to us. Look at the Muslims. They know the Muslims because of the because of their beliefs, they know they don't they shit they'll blow some shit up to get their point across. That shit scares the shit out of white folks. That's why they use that as a political tool to further an agenda. But really that agenda isn't against the white Arab, it's against the black people that have converted to Islam. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So now, what they gonna do when, when they realize that all of us are converting to, to, to this? African tradition, yeah, African indigenous ways. So, you know, I just feel like, you know, this buses. is our, some of our karma, like you said, because we went away from our traditions. You know. Well, well, well. It's not that we went away from it. We were we, tricked out. We of were it. tricked out of our traditions, because you, if you all look at the book by Carter G. Wilson, it's called. It's a book called uh, How to Teach a Negro How to Be a Christian, and then you know Carter G. Wilson wrote the uh, Miseducation of a Negro, but he had a book years ago called How to Teach a Negro How to Be a Christian, and what they did during slavery times is they took away the African indigenous traditional ways from the slaves, and if they were caught using them, they were killing them because they were afraid of the power because they knew that we were very indigenous to the land. So with saying that, what they did is they began to give them the Bible. And in that Bible, they, you know, kind of brainwashed them program. Hey, oh, we God created you in the image and likeness of yourself. And that white man... And had you putting up for years, had your grandmothers, your great grandmothers, and putting up black Jesuses on the wall, making you white Jesuses. I'm sorry, making you believe that this man that was over you was white. That was their subliminal way of brainwashing and programming you to submit to the white man and his ways and his religion. Think about it. Your grandmother is worshiping a white man. How does my father? I don't look like him. You see what I'm saying? Y'all remember the episode on Good Times, right? So the, the truth of the matter, that was a way of subliminally programming you to actually believe that there was a white man that was above you. That was a beginning. That was a start to make you believe that there was a white man. So you would always think that he was superior than you. Yeah. Think about it. And um, just like the other book, um, uh, what was it? What's the name of it? A Water of Spirit. Mm -hmm. And the brother, I forget the, oh, what's the author's name? Maladamu. Uh, Maladamu. 
Yeah, he. So, Maladamo Patrice, so, I forgot so many times, <laughs> something like that. I can put a cup to the African names. I gotta ask my baby to pronounce them because I can't pronounce African names. <laughs> I'm sorry, but um, in this book, he talks about how they went to war with the Dutch, and his grandfather remember those days, and he talked about how. When they went to war with the Dutch, when they came to his his country, that um, that the white they would go they would go to war with the white man. That all the tribe people would go to war with the white people. In the daytime, the white man he may win a few battles, they may win a few, but then at night, all the traditional healers got to work, and they called on. I ain't gonna say the spirit. I think y'all should check out the book, but he called on this certain spirit. And the spirit, he would they would do the rituals all night in the a.m. all night, and the, the spirit would go and kill thousands and thousands of Dutch people. And now remember, the Dutch had better weapons, but they would kill thousands of Dutchmen at night using using their traditional uh, ways. And so it got to the point where they was like, "We can't beat these Africans. We got we got everything above them, and we still can't beat them." So what they did was they they just they called a ceasefire, and when they called a ceasefire, there were no terms and conditions. You know the Africans thought, "Well, shit, the war is over," and then they allowed these people to come in and live in their country. And what they did is the Europeans said, "You know what? We all live together. Y'all should pay taxes on y'all land that y'all never paid taxes on for, so we could buy things and fix up your country." Oh yeah, so the Africans agreed. Then after that. You know, they put in other stuff. Oh, y'all should, you know, then they sent in the missionary. Y'all should do this. Y'all should do that. Actually, they sent in the, the uh, Catholic Church to get them to agree to setting up a meeting to call the uh, ceasefire and everything. So when the Catholic Church did that, they they convinced the Africans that they need to give up their uh, their traditions and worship Jesus. So they won't go to hell. And a lot of them were so A lot of the Africans believed that shit so much that they were so afraid to go to hell that they gave up their, uh, you know, their traditions. And except for the Maasai, they said, get and, the hell out. White man not allowed. And they were able to uh, start stealing their land and taking it. And they didn't even have to defeat them in war to do it. You know, Kumpunya says, yes, Europeans and some Negro Europeans are fully under a spell. Um, that spell is, is slowly but surely becoming lifted, Kufunya. And what's happening is because we're going through a transformation on the cellular level, they are too. So it's being lifted. And we haven't seen anything yet. And in the very near future, we will see a change. We will see a change for the better. Now I want to go back to what uh, Nova America said. Nova America, you worship nobody. Don't worship nobody. Nobody physical. If you're going to worship your ancestors, you worship your ancestors because they are the ones who was here before us. And we also are our ancestors and our ancestors are us. So we share that same DNA. But I don't worship no human being on this earth. Not near one human being. On this earth. That don't mean that I don't like you and I don't love you because you've been nice to me. That just means I'm not worshiping you because you're just another human being. And you physical just like me. But yes, I will worship my ancestors because I don't do nothing without my ancestors. You see, as a matter of fact, speaking of that, today's my father's birthday. Happy, happy, happy birthday, daddy. <laughs> my father's in the other spiritual realm right now, but happy birthday, daddy. I was his only child. Right? Okay. But anyway, family, it is now 1154. Since we didn't get any calls, I know nobody had no questions. We're going to go ahead and get off of here. You know, getting a little tired, okay? Um, been nice. Y'all want us to talk about something? Hit us up here on Facebook, on the inbox, or hit me on the front page. Yep. Give us a topic you want us to talk about. Also, tomorrow night, Friday night, 9 p.m., y'all check me out on Anchor. I'll be doing free readings on Anchor. Our free readings, y'all better come check me out on Anchor, A-N-C-H-O-R. It's on the front of my Facebook page, so if y'all want to um, get on there, hit me up, join the conversation, get a reading, come check me out on Anchor. Amber Smith, peace and blessings, my sister.
Okay. And also, um, for those of you who don't uh, know about our Facebook page, you can, I mean, not Facebook, uh, YouTube, YouTube page. page, follow us on YouTube at uh, Nikki Love. Wunam. Wunam. On uh, YouTube, and you could uh, check us out. She's got a ye- she's wearing a yellow shirt on there, so that's the one we're on. Nikki Love Wunam on YouTube. Um, YouTube is getting my goddamn nerves, though. Facts. <laughs> Shit. Doing too much. Doing entirely too much. Okay. Anyway, family, peace and blessings. Gotta go. Been nice. Love y'all. Don't forget to talk to your ancestors. Don't forget to go outside and make best friends with that son because they've been kicking our asses. Ra. Go outside and hug a tree. Go outside and hug the spirit of the wind. (laughs) And spend a little time with the spirit of the fire. On that note, we'll see y'all. Probably Sunday we'll come back and hang out with y'all. But for those who want to hang out with me on Anchor tomorrow night, 9 p.m. Eastern Time, me and Brother Dink will be on there. Come check us out on Anchor. That's our podcast, our voice podcast, okay? Peace and blessings, family. All right, peace.